Welcome back to MBOX Frustrated User Guide. You're watching MXQ Upgrade Secrets Part 2. So, how do you keep all this stuff running smoothly? The first thing you want to do is make sure you have this status bar out. If you don't have the status bar out, go to Settings, Display, Hide status bar has to be off. By default, it's on. You want to make sure that this is off so the status bar, which is this, is not hidden. Now, here's why you need this. So let's launch an app. Let's go to Movies Online HD, the replacement for Movie Play Red. Looks just like Movie Play Red. By the way, the original name for Movie Play Red was Terrarium. There are lots of Terrarium clones. This is the only one that I'm aware of that still works on MXQ with Android KitKat. And here it is, works exactly the same as before, works perfectly. So we'll just quit for now. Now, the problem with my box, it doesn't have enough memory to multitask. So I'm going to open Mobdrill. Mobdrill is your cable box, works perfectly, continues to work great. You can run this all day long. We'll quit out of that. And we can look at maybe Gallery. Now, what happens after you've opened all these apps and forgotten about them? Well, they remain open, and you see this little square here. This shows you all your open apps. The problem is, at some point, the box will fail to run because these apps are open. I know you've read elsewhere it's not necessary to close these out. Believe me, it's very necessary to close these out. My box can't walk and chew gum at the same time. If I don't close these apps, nothing is going to work right. So here's how you do it. You click on that right there. Then you click on an open app that you don't want to use at the moment. You click and hold. A menu comes up. You can now release the OK button. You go down to Remove from List. Click the OK button again, and you repeat this for all your open apps. So I'll click, hold until the menu appears, release the OK button, come down to Remove from List, click on it again, and it's gone. And you have to do this for everything. You have to do this before shutting down also. Because if you don't, this box is going to have a tendency to turn itself back on, especially after we fully configure it. It's very important to remember to do this. Click, hold for the menu, release, remove from list. Okay, good. And you keep doing this until you see this message that says no recent apps. And at that point, you can hit return, turn the box off, do whatever you wish. And this is how you keep everything running right. It's also important to keep your apps up to date, noting that Google Play Services for KitKat is up to version 20.1.03. Best place to get it right now is apkmirror.com. This is the most important update ever released for MXQ, in my opinion. Whatever the driver issues were, the Google Play Service developers seem to have fixed them. The remote control works perfectly now. No more sticky keys. No more repeating keys. The on-screen keyboard is much improved too. My default language selection actually sticks. I don't have to switch from Chinese to English anymore each and every time I try to search for something. Mobdro is up to version 2.1.64 Freemium. 
if the site shown here doesn't have it anymore? Search for it online like this. Morph TV is up to version 1.78. Same story. If the site shown here doesn't have it anymore, someone else will. And Movies Online HD version 1.0.1 is an exact replacement for Movie Play Red, which doesn't work anymore. This app is hard to find, but well worth the effort. But that's not all. Here's a list of additional apps that now work on MXQ. Worth noting, Crackle is a very good movie app. It's fast, and it works as well on my MXQ as on any of my better boxes. Cyro's HD version 1.6.0 might be the fastest, most capable MXQ streaming app yet. Unfortunately, it contains very annoying ads. Still, you might want to give it a try. Why? Because it plays the latest movies and TV shows in 1080p right to the end without buffering. The start speed and picture quality is every bit as good as on my 2019 Fire Stick. Don't believe me? It's free. Try it yourself and see. US TV Pro is a fine alternative to Mobdro. If you can't get the channel you want in Mobdro, try installing US TV Pro instead. Lots of channels. Here we see version 6.35 running perfectly on MXQ. Search for US TV Pro online like this. And if you live in India, you'll definitely want Oreo TV 1.8.1 instead. Find it here. All of these extra apps work fine on my MXQ. The problem is I can't have all of them installed at the same time. They fit fine. It's just that once I use much over 2 gigabytes of storage space, the box slows down to a crawl. Here, my installed apps use 2.4 gigabytes, leaving only 2.8 gigabytes free. That should be enough, right? But it's not. That MXQ experience is more like watching the grass grow. Now I've come to my senses and trimmed the installed apps to 2 gigabytes, leaving over 3 gigabytes free. It's working again! What you're looking at here are all of the apps running on my MXQ right now in January of 2020. Of course, you may have a completely different motherboard in your MXQ and yours might work a lot better than mine. Whatever the case may be, it's up to you to establish the storage limitations of your particular MXQ. Don't be surprised if you have to leave 3 gigabytes free to maximize performance. So the next thing we asked was what do all these switches do? Well this one right here, Google TV Remote has to do with a phone app. That would be an app that you download and put on your Android phone. You turn this on, and if that app is on your phone, then it allows you to control the Google apps like YouTube on this inbox with your phone. The problem with the Google TV remote phone app is that it only works with Google applications. The minute you try to use it to control some other app that's not a Google authorized application like Mobdro, it stops working. Now what about this switch, remote control? When you turn this switch on, it gives you the IP address of the box, which is very handy. And this is what you need to use a better phone remote control app called C-Display. C-Display does work on this box. There are two parts to it. One part it downloads and installs on your phone. 
The second part downloads and installs on the box. It works perfectly on this box. The only problem is my box has so little memory that I don't want to sacrifice those resources to it. But that's what this is for. These are the remote control apps on my phone right now. Whether or not Google TV Remote and C Display are going to work on your box, whether or not you'll find either of them useful, is anybody's guess. But at least we now know what the switches are for. What about Miracast? Lots of good tutorials already online, but here are the basics. Go to Settings, Advanced, click on the word Miracast, waiting for the user to connect. Note your inbox device name circled here in red. My MXQ is named Android 9E70. Now go to your phone, turn on screen mirroring, and select the name of your MXQ TV box. Your MXQ will notify you of an invitation to connect. Click Accept. Your phone will then indicate connecting, and within seconds, your phone screen will be mirrored on the TV screen. Now that we've got the box working, it might also be a good idea to update the home screen. What you're looking at right now is called Media Box Launcher. There's nothing wrong with it, but I personally associate Media Box Launcher with the MXQ box that just didn't work. For a new look, go to Settings, Other, More Settings, Device, Home. In most cases, two launches have been factory installed on MXQ. To switch to the official Android KitKat launcher, just click on Launcher. Next, click the Home icon on the taskbar or press the Home button on your remote control. Now, regarding the default wallpaper, is that supposed to be confetti? Whatever it's supposed to be, it's way too busy for me. To select another one, click the Menu button on your remote control and select Wallpaper from the pop-up menu at the lower right corner of the display. Choose New Wallpaper from one of three locations. Here, I've chosen Gallery, showing solid color wallpapers and photos that I've imported from my phone. Any photo on your phone can be used as wallpaper. Click on the photo you want to open it. Adjust its position on the screen. You can drag it up and down, left and right, then click on Set Wallpaper to make it stick. You can re-wallpaper as often as you like. Here, I'm switching to solid black wallpaper. There's no need to adjust position, just set wallpaper to make it stick. Home screen looks sharp. And here's what the app drawer looks like. Look familiar? For an even sharper look, you can install ATV Launcher version 0.0.11 free. Now that's an app drawer. When first installed, a big black area at the top of the screen is reserved for widgets. In the interest of speed and performance, position your mouse pointer anywhere on that black space. Click the menu button on your remote and remove the check mark from Show Widgets. The app drawer relocates to the top and you'll have a much better, faster experience. Then there's the Yugas TV Launcher version 1.4.11. How do I know it's pronounced Yugas? Because I asked them. Yugas means smart idea. Who'd have guessed that you could install this much class on MXQ? Look at that status bar. You have a clock, a weather widget that actually works. Take that, Tanix. A free storage indicator, currently showing 3 gig. See, I take my own advice. A network indicator, currently showing a Wi-Fi connection. 
and a USB indicator currently showing that an external drive is connected. There are customizable app compartments. Yugus is a very high-end box manufacturer. Check out their products at yugus.com and download the free Yugus launcher from any of these sources. Well, the box looks great. It's working pretty good. It's hard to believe you could get this much performance from an MXQ. But honestly, you ain't heard nothing yet. Thanks for watching. Next time on MBOX Frustrated User Guide MXQ Audio Secrets Ever wonder what these two output jacks are for? Well, with the right cable, they let you use MXQ as an internet radio. So, where do you get the right cable? And what music APKs work best on MXQ with Android KitKat? We'll cover all that and much more next time on MBOX Frustrated User Guide.